Hello everyone. Today we want to do sort of an interesting video and this uh, is something that I believe a lot of our customers experience and we want to sort of discuss some of the things that we can uh, do to address it. So one of the most common setups people will have is a 12 volt is definitely by far the most common setup that we see. And a lot of people are now using multiple batteries because they're powering air conditioners, microwaves, and various other large devices. So we want to basically discuss some strategies when you are doing parallel setups. Now, this doesn't necessarily apply to uh, serial or in-series connections where you up the voltage, but it certainly does apply if you are running parallel setups. So let's sort of go over what we have. We have a uh, 3000 watt inverter. We have uh, sort of a, just a 1500 watt uh, heater that you know you can get the pretty much from any hardware store or home improvement store. And then we have our parallel setups. Now this is done in what we would normally call a piggyback setup. These are our new 300 S batteries that we will be coming out uh, this should be available any day now. Very affordable. Uh, just a nice solid battery with 150 amp BMS, built-in active balancer, runs and works fairly well. But now let's just go over how we have these wired. So we have a black to black to black and then a final here from this black all the way to the inverter. And then we have red to red to red and then final red all the way to the inverter. Now this is not the most optimal setup, but it's what we usually hear people on the phone, what they're doing, how they're sorting, uh, sort of setting up their batteries. One thing to note, the battery by default will come with sort of uh, M8 by 10 millimeter uh, screws. And this is fine if you've got one lug. However, when you're doing a setup like this where you've got two lugs, you'll need to go to your hardware store and get something slightly taller. This is a 16 millimeter. So if you compare the two, you can see it sits up slightly higher and, well, let me sort of put it here. It sits up slightly higher. So that's going to give you a little more thread so that you can use multiple setup. Okay. Now, we're first going to do a discharge test, see how everything works and sort of show you how everything is set up. But that's a little bit about how we have wired this. Uh, and next we're going to say... Uh, show we're going to connect to these batteries via the app and show you how that whole process sort of works All right now that we've gone over how we've wired it. Let's now actually start doing some tests so We've got o3 o5 and o6 These are our 300s batteries should be on our website fairly soon So they're all active balancer Bluetooth enabled Let's go ahead and hit scan, and we're going to find them, and once we find them, we're going to connect to them. We went ahead and added a nickname, so this is nickname battery 1, battery 2, and battery 3. Alright, so we'll go here to our list, and we'll say we want battery 1, battery 2, battery 3, and hit connect. This is also being recorded, so we'll sort of do it like a screen overlay. Um, oh, let's hit connect again. It's going to ask us if it's in series or parallel. So we'll choose the parallel option. These are three in parallel. Okay. All right, and then when we'll come there, we'll see the three batteries. So we've got battery one, two, and three. So there we go. All right, now this is set up. Let's actually start running some loads on the batteries to see uh, how things work. So we're just gonna turn our little heater on and say we want to warm this up to 90 degrees. Okay. So it's going to start turning it on. All right, and we can see batteries are discharging. But and we see the heater is now running. 
Now here's what I want you to notice. As you remember, this is battery one, battery two, and battery three. Let's see how the loads are actually being applied to the battery. We see 62 amps on battery one, 49 amps on battery two, and 17 amps on battery three. So majority of load is being carried by this battery. A little bit of load is being carried by this battery and hardly any load is being carried by this battery. Now, if you were to use this, what do you think is gonna happen? Even though these are parallel, you will inevitably have an unbalanced setup. And that is because electricity likes to flow from the path of least resistance. So since the wire is here, it's far easier for the inverter to pull power from here than to also pull from here. Now, eventually what will happen is that this will get down low enough to where power will start coming from this battery and start feeding to this. But while you're in the middle of the curve, of the discharge curve, it's not going to bounce. Now, normally this was not as big of an issue with lead acid batteries, because as you can see, it is an issue with uh, lithium. And it's gotten a little better, but overall, there's quite a bit difference. Battery one is basically providing twice the power as battery three. You've got 60 amps versus um, 18 amps. So this is not optimal. Now let's see what we can do and see if there's a way that we can wire this to where we get a better load. So we're going to go ahead and turn the heater off. Okay. okay, so let's see what we have done. So instead of both positive and negative coming from battery one, we've now actually tapped to the negative terminal of the third battery. So now it acts like a larger sort of loop. As you can see, black wires coming from here, all the way to here and there, and the red wire sort of here okay and let's sort of see what the batteries are telling us you can actually see battery three is kind of charging battery one you can see the indicator so we get current flowing from battery three to battery battery one and battery two is just kind of i guess chilling enjoying itself saying man eh, i don't have much to do but we can see we're, we're sending about 1.3 amps out of battery three and about 0.7 amps are receiving battery to battery one all right, now we're going to run the heater again in this configuration and see if we can get some slightly better results. So we'll turn the heater on. Again, we'll say, hey, we want 90 degrees in here. Okay. All right, and let's see what our app says. Okay, slightly better. We've got 45 from battery one, 40 from battery two, and about 44 from battery three. So changing the wire configuration so that it is now drawing as an entire pack has improved upon the battery setup. It's actually gotten significantly better because now you can see uh, there it's it's it is better in terms of battery one and three are pulling evenly, but we slight we see a slight difference on battery number two. So not bad, pretty decent, but it appears that the outer batteries will do a little more heavy lifting, whereas the, maybe the middle battery not so much but still much better than the original setup where everything was running off battery one so one way to do that is set this up and uh, this way you can sort of even out the loads okay now we're going to do another setup and this is the bus bar setup now as you can see in this one, in our manual, this is why we recommend not going more than two for piggyback. But let's see if we can sort of improve upon this by going to what we call a bus bar setup. 
okay? So we'll do that next. Okay, now let's talk about the bus bar setup. This is a setup that we will recommend if you're running more than three batteries in parallel. So like four batteries in parallel, we are, in our pre-built, we will tell you you need to sort of run um, a bus bar setup. And the main goal behind this is to sort of even out the load among the batteries. So let's see how the bus bar setup is. We have equal length red going to a common bus bar. And if we open up this sort of bus bar, this is the SFK uh, 250 amp heavy duty bus bar available on our website. And as you can see, we've got all three positives of batteries going here. And then we've got another one going to the inverter itself. And it just secures in place with these little, um, these little um, tie down or, you know, nylon secure nuts. <clears throat> and then from here, it has red going to the inverter. The black is done the same way. All three of these wires are exactly the same length. They go here and then this black wire and is the same length as this red wire. It's the same length going to here. Okay. Now, now that we have this one, we have seen how it is with two direct, which we don't recommend because there's a big difference. We've seen how it is with here and then negative here better, but the, med the one in the middle was doing a l uh, less work than the other two. Now we have them in parallel. Let's see if we can see a difference. So we'll go ahead and what we're gonna do is turn on the heater again. Okay, so let's see what the app is saying. Right now the app is saying only battery three is discharging slightly at 0.4 amps. Okay. So we've so we've got a load going on now, and we see 44, 41.2, 43. So battery two and three are now a little closer together. Uh, like I said, not that much difference from there, but it is pulling a little more evenly than it was when it versus when it was just uh, sort of piggybacked. Okay. And actually, as we go down, battery three is now pulling 42 and 41.3. So battery two and three have pretty much evened out. And battery one is still pulling slightly more load, but that's only a two amp difference. And uh, as you can see, we were able to improve the difference between battery two and three from five, four and a half, five amps down to less than, an, uh, well, actually now they're almost dead even, uh, 41. 0.4 and 43.2 so doing this set setup um, it does cost a little more money and it does take longer but it allows you to keep your batteries sort of being charged discharged evenly and the more you have the more critical it becomes so in a four parallel setup it becomes absolutely critical um, we have you know seen setups where it, it, it starts drifting quite a bit now, one of the reasons why you might be saying, well, hey, 44 on battery one, so it didn't really make that much of a difference. I'll, I'll explain to you why. As you can see, this is where the main draw is. And as you can see, the closest one to it is battery one. So that's why you see battery one. If we were to move this to something like here, whichever one is closest to the load is one that's the one that's gonna have the highest load. So. Sure, we weren't able to completely eliminate it, but we were able to reduce it. And again, the reason why battery one sees a slightly heavier load is because the main inverter connection is closest to it. Okay, so that should sort of tell you the concept principle. The closer you are to the load, the more it will put a load on it and the more it will do it. So this is for discharging. Let's see what happens with charging. Is it, is it the same concept or do we have something different? So we're going to go ahead and turn this off. Okay. And we're going to let this thing cool down. And then we're going to plug in our 30 amp charger and see how that does. Okay. So we've gone and done the discharge test. And we had improved results when you have distributed wire. 
and slightly better results when you had in parallel wire. But nonetheless, they were better than without. Let's now see how the effect happens with charging, okay? So this is a 40 amp charger that we have. It's a basic charger, nothing amazing or special. So we have it plugged in and we're charging. Let's sort of see what the charger is saying. And as you can see, battery one is getting 11 amps, battery two is getting 9.1, and battery three is getting 9.8. So again, pretty darn close. And this is with the bus bar setup. So doing bus bars, it doesn't matter if you're charging or discharging, the more even you can get it, the better off it is going to be. Now, obviously, not everyone, everything is torqued perfectly. Not everything is going to be there. But our goal is to sort of get it as close to even as we can. And this is pretty close enough. As you can see, it's now 10.1, 9.2, 9.7. So the amps among the three are quite even. And by doing it this way, you have a much greater chance of making sure your batteries don't go out of balance. So what we saw was the worst is you should never, oh, by the way, that kicked in. We'll go ahead and turn this off because we don't really need to charge it. We just wanted to sort of demonstrate it. So what that sort of does is let you uh, know that wiring your batteries in parallel the correct way can make a tremendous difference in the way that you're going to be discharging them. Unlike lead acid, they don't self-balance as easily, especially when they're in the flat part of their uh, discharge curve. So take the time, wire batteries co uh, correctly, and if you do that, um, you should have a far better experience making sure the batteries are sort of there. Um, if you're not gonna use bus bars and you are restricting yourself to two, you should be okay. Just make sure your final positive and final negative on the ne other part of the battery. Once you get into three, um, consider using the bus bar. And if you definitely are going to be running more than three, then the bus bars are going to basically be mandatory because that's going to allow you to uh, sort of evenly discharge among all three um, of the batteries. Okay. All right. Well, that's going to be it. Hopefully this will help some people in their questions on parallel setups. And we'll just see you guys in the next one. Thank you.